and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to all my God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary, and ever virgin, <coughs> my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject 
whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, Obey the Lord our, your God by observing his commandments and decrees that are written in this book of the law. Turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Surely this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe the word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. Christ is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in Christ all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of the cross. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. A lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? The lawyer answered, 
You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, the lawyer asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, the Samaritan took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever you spend. Jesus asked, Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The lawyer said, The one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, sometimes what may appear to be a tragedy in your life could in fact be an act of God's mercy. And when we journey towards something, we also are journeying away from something. Well, the man in Jesus' gospel parable was traveling down a dangerous road from Jerusalem, the holy city, towards Jericho, a city known for its commerce and wealth. It was a distance of about 24 kilometers and a drop in elevation of about 550 meters. This story has a hidden meaning. In other words, the man was descending from a place that was considered to be holy, a place of safety and blessings, to a place that was worldly, affluent, with plenty of temptations. In Christian terms, this could represent the actions of a backslider. Now we know that our focus as Christians should be to strive for the higher ground in our walk of faith. There's no such thing as standing still. We're either moving upward towards the light or downward away from it. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, it tells us that we all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being changed into his likeness from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Now, the Jewish man in the story didn't make it to Jericho to experience more of that worldly lifestyle. Now, perhaps his faith was not strong enough to endure the temptations. His journey was a painful experience, but it may have saved his soul. Now, God doesn't always look to make our lives trouble-free. Everything that happens to us has a purpose. God is working in our lives to bring about our salvation. And we should always try to keep this in mind and seek God's goodness and mercy in every situation, even if it appears to be troublesome. You know, my daughter-in-law recently gave my son a coffee mug that simply says, See the good. This is a wonderful way to live our lives, to see everything as a blessing from God. Now, at one time or another, all of us can probably relate to being one of the characters in Jesus' parable. As the victim, many of us know what it's like to be thrust down, 
to be wounded, ignored, or left alone like we're half dead, just like the injured man in the story. Perhaps we've experienced abuse or betrayal by someone we trusted. It could be a family breakup or the death of a loved one. Perhaps a serious illness has left us without hope. The experience may also have crippled our spiritual life and our love for God and neighbor. But here's the thing. People may not have a clue of what you and I have gone through. But Jesus does. Jesus is our good Samaritan who wants to help us. In Jeremiah 29, verse 11, God tells us, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Now the question is, what are we doing that is keeping us from experiencing God's plan for our lives? God wants to enter into our painful experience as the Good Samaritan. But are we ready to forgive and even humble ourselves in order to gain understanding of how perhaps we may have contributed to the situation that we find ourselves in? God can't do much if we're proud and there is unforgiveness in our hearts. Now with God's help, we can change. It's a moment of grace, of truth, and of growth to ask God for forgiveness and for the ability to forgive others. This is where healing begins. However, there are some people who want to remain the victim. They thrive on people's sympathy and they love to complain. It's a form of control. They want as many people as possible to join their pity party. If this is us, it's time to let it go in order to begin to grow. Now, yes, we may have been hard done by, and it's painful even to think about it. But if we ask the Lord to give us the strength to go on and to forgive even ourselves, this is when Jesus shows up. He can then pour oil on our inner wounds and bandage them up and bring us to a place of healing. Now, yes, there may be scars, but we consider these to be our battle wounds. Has not Jesus, our Savior, also suffered many battle wounds because of our sins? Now, suffering, we know, is all part of life. And Jesus told us we must carry our cross along the narrow path that leads to eternal life. It also leads to peace, to love, and to joy. Now, in this way, we can go from being a victim to becoming a victor in Christ Jesus. St. Catherine of Siena said that all the way to heaven is heaven because Jesus is the way. Now, as it says in 2 Corinthians, God comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort that we ourselves are comforted by God. For as we share in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort as well. Well, when we think about it, there are those of us who have one time or another possibly been like the robbers in the story. Well, you may think, well, I've never attacked anyone physically or stolen anything of any significance. But oh, how many times have we gossiped or contributed even in a small way to the destruction of someone's character? And how many times have we said hurtful things in an argument that has wounded others? And Proverbs 18 tells us, Life and death are in the power of the tongue. So it's important that we be careful what we say in order to speak healing and hope, to leave people uplifted after we've spoken to them. Idle and negative words should have no place in our vocabulary. 
Now, at times, we can also be like the innkeeper. Yes, we have an opportunity to do good, but only if there's a payoff. If the reason why we do something good is to get something more in return, or to be noticed or praised, then God can't bless us like he wants to. The Bible tells us that freely we have been given, and so freely give. Jesus tells us, what good is it if you do good to those who are good to you? Or even sinners do the same. But you must do good to those who hate you, those who bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you, return good for evil, and you will in turn be blessed as children of the Most High God. Also in the story, there's the priest and the Levites who were selfish, too busy, or preoccupied with their own things, their own agenda, afraid to get involved. They didn't want to be inconvenienced, even when it was one of their own Jewish brothers. Now, most of us have been guilty of this at one time or another. The good that we could have done, we did not do. We may have felt that, well, I have enough problems of my own, and I don't need to take on anyone else's right now. But Jesus is not only telling us to help, but to help even our enemies when we see that they need us. It's significant that Jesus used the Samaritan as the hero in the story. Even though earlier on the Samaritans did not welcome Jesus into their town, Jesus still elected to use a Samaritan to convey his message of love. He didn't hold any grudges, and we shouldn't either with anyone who has offended us. Now, the Samaritan didn't have the right theology or the customs to be considered holy by Jewish standards. Nevertheless, Jesus wants us to become like the Good Samaritan. Jesus looks at the heart. Everything that has been given to us by God, our wealth, our talents, our influence, and even our faith is meant to be shared. Love requires sacrifice. And so God gives us opportunities to sacrifice for others in order that we may glorify him by becoming more like his son, Jesus. And this is how we store up treasures in heaven. St. Paul also tells us we could speak and preach with tongues of men and of angels. We can have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. We can have all faith enough to remove mountains, and we can give away all our possessions. But if we have no love, we gain nothing, and it means nothing. In the end, it's all about love. We won't be judged by how big our bank accounts were, or how many degrees we have, or how successful we've been in business or in sports. In the end, God's going to ask us, what did we do with what we were given? How much did we love? All of the power and influence in the world doesn't come close to the awesome power of love. Love never fails because God is love and love conquers all. Even when we die, Love goes on.
believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> with faith and confidence, let us bring our needs and those of all God's people to the throne of our Heavenly Father. That the Word of God will give all believers courage to stand against injustice and heal the wounds dealt by hatred and violence, we pray to the Lord. That all church leaders will lead God's people to foster greater unity and respect among Christians of various traditions, and with those of other faiths, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That the Holy Spirit will inflame the hearts and minds of our young Catholics to offer a renewed witness to Christ, that they may be the first evangelizers of their peers, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That all farmers, all those who work with and care for God's natural creation, will be blessed with good weather, reprieve from drought or flood, and just working conditions, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That our living and merciful God will guide and bless leaders of our church and the indigenous peoples of this land as we prepare for a visit from the Holy Father to further the work of reconciliation, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That Christ, the Prince of Peace, will bless and comfort all who are suffering because of warfare or violence, especially the people of Ukraine and the people of Japan following the assassination of their Prime Minister, we pray to the Lord. That the power of Christ, risen from the dead, may give comfort and healing to all those who are suffering, especially Addison Hill and the sick of our parish, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That the glory of the resurrection will shine on all the faithful departed, especially Rosemary Newbigin and the deceased members of our parish family, we pray to the Lord. Let us ask our Blessed Lady to pray with us and to pray for us as we say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. <coughs> may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, St. Bartholomew, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Douglas, our Bishop, Wayne, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just two brief announcements. Uh, firstly, the parish gift shop is open immediately after Mass. The gift shop is located downstairs in the parish hall. And secondly, contrary to what it says in the bulletin, Cardinal Collins will not be celebrating Mass here next Saturday morning. That was last Saturday morning. However, if you're interested, His Eminence will be celebrating Mass here at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. You are all very welcome. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.